mean, to me, the most underreported story is the economic disparity that continues to define the world in its essence. It is the essential fact of human existence that there's about four billion people who have almost nothing compared to the two billion or one and a half billion who have so much. And there's a gigantic void there. And in fact, you know, the, the Occupy movement likes to focus on the 1% versus the 99% in the U.S. But if you look at it on a global basis, you know, the whole United States is kind of closer to the 1%. And what we really, the unreported story is that there is a 99% out there in, you know, Nigeria and India and Indonesia and Malaysia and, uh, you know, Indonesia with its 400 million people, which is the world's fourth largest country and most Americans barely even know exists, you know, you know, or Brazil, or, you know, some of these countries are moving ahead quite quickly economically, but they still are primarily defined by poverty by any comparison to ourselves. That's a huge story. That's an underreported story. Mm -hmm. um, um, So that would be my number one candidate for that. I mean, I'd say um, another underreported story, in my opinion, is despite the fact that we, so many of us use iPhones and you know we use Facebook and we think we're all into tech and everything, I don't think most people have really digested how quickly technology is changing the way we live. And Facebook is a very emblematic example of that, which is why I wrote a book about it. But I have a company that I now run called Techonomy, Techonomy Media, and what we are in the business of doing is trying to raise issues uh, and, and conduct conferences about and, and write things about how quickly technology is literally changing everything. And um, we, I think that's exciting, and I think it's very promising because it means you can solve problems that could never be solved before. And a friend of mine, Peter Diamandis, just wrote a book called Abundance, which is extremely optimistic about how technology is going to allow us to enter into an era of abundance. But just from the standpoint of the sort of mental models that people walk around with, I think they don't recognize how quickly everything's changing. And one very, very good example of that is what's happening with jobs. You know, and, and you know, there's a ton of rhetoric in the presidential campaign about bringing a manufacturing back to America. But what none of the politicians or seemingly the voters have realized is that manufacturing these days doesn't require people. Manufacturing is increasingly automated in all parts of the world, even including China. Mm -hmm. I mean, the biggest manufacturer in the world is Foxconn, which is the company being investigated for all these Apple suicides and everything. Foxconn has about a million employees. They've also decided to put in a million robots to replace a very large percentage of those employees, even in China. Foxconn's building their own robots. To they're building a factory just to build robots to put in their other factories. I mean, they're that big. But, you know, automation is changing everything. And it's really, there's a huge set of unreported issues about what jobs really are going to be in the future and whether there really will even be possible to be enough jobs for all the people mm -hmm. because so many things will be automated now we're going to be able to solve all kinds of problems we're going to we're going to have diagnostics that are going to be automated for medicine you know and doctors are not going to be necessary to diagnose elementary diseases there will still be some doctors but you know i just read an article recently that said the jobs some of the jobs that are most at risk in coming years are doctors and lawyers because so many of the things they do are can be converted to digital decision trees uh, using various kinds of sampling and t diagnostics and um, and uh, you know so doctors will have to prescribe courses of treatment but basic things that you know you go in and get your tongue depressed and that can all be done by machines more effic effic efficiently and, and, and it will be and it is being done more efficiently in other parts of the world where they can't afford the kind of doctors that we have. And this is another thing that's changing because a lot of these innovations are actually emerging in parts of the world where that are defined by poverty because they need these solutions faster. You know, and in the end, having things done by machines is cheaper than having them done by people. So it, it's you know, you could say another unreported story, and especially in the United States, is the degree to which the technologies that are going to transform our lives are going to emerge 
in the less developed parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole lot of things to unpack there, but I think there's a lot of unreported stories around the impact of technology and, and the impact of poverty, and I see these things uh, very much related.